You are now listening to the Curtis King Podcast. Welcome to the Curtis King Podcast. For those of you that are listening for the first time, we want to welcome you to this podcast that is specifically for music producers, but for creatives and thinkers alike. We like to talk about music in this space, but we also like to make sure that we put an emphasis, a very important emphasis on the mental health of music producers and creatives and thinkers. But that being said, if you're listening for the first time over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or wherever you're listening to, we want to thank you. And also, if you enjoy this episode and you want to go check out some more, definitely do that. But make sure you leave us a five star rating, some commentary and just let other folks know this is a safe space for those that are like you. If you'd like to watch the video format of this, go over to my Curtis King TV YouTube page, which you just literally search in Curtis King with two S's, Curtis King TV. And you'll find this podcast as well as a amazing community of creatives just like yourself. And I think you'll really enjoy it on the other side. That being said, today's topic is going to leave fee- people, people, who is people? It's going to leave people, music producers specifically, it's going to leave you very uncomfortable if you're not okay with the notion of you having a necessity to learn how to rap. Curtis, what are you, what are you talking about? We're going to talk about that in more, but I want to start this off with a tweet, not from me, but from an artist, I believe, by the name of Knox Hill, either an artist. Let me, let me double check that. Um, this is an artist. I saw it through the homie Epic retweeted something that he said, and then I re retweeted because I really did resonate with this. And this is dedicated to those of you out there that think that you're doing me justice by telling me how to make my music, how to approach it, how to mix it, how to do whatever you have critiques about as if one, I don't enjoy the process and enjoy learning on my own or learning through the people that I seek to for information and mentorship or whatever tutelage. Um, But for those of you that think that you, I don't know, you got some kind of savior complex. The Knox Hill said this, appreciate, he's talking to his audience, I'm I'm guessing. He says, appreciate the constructive criticism, but not really. (laughs) Just keep that to yourself, people. I've been doing this for too long now. And every detail, every choice is debated, changed, and done for a specific reason. If it's not your vibe, cool. I'm independent for a reason. The heart of this tweet is the end of that. I love that. I'm independent for a reason. And for those of you that may get the wrong idea hearing that tweet and saying, well, I'm independent for a reason. Does that mean that because you're independent, that means that you care less about quality? No, not at all. That's not that's not what he's implying. I don't believe that's what the the human beings implying. Um, I say that human being like I'm some kind of alien, Uh, but I don't think that's what he's implying. I resonate deeply with that message because I think that people get it wrong for some of us that have been doing music, creating music, I've been making music for almost 20 years. And along the way, I have learned some things. I have been taught some things. I have seeked out information myself and I've done a lot of trial and error and by no means am I perfect. Will I ever be perfect? But I'm a work in progress that is enjoying the actual process. And to speak specifically, this last week, I released a song called Ego. And I've been very upfront about me being sort of new to vocal mixing and diving into it and learning so many things at the same time and, you know, being a little bit overwhelmed at times, but for the most part, really enjoying learning about it. And this is another reason why I say producers, you should not be producing for other producers because they have an ear sometimes that just doesn't let go. 
right? There can be some details within a mix or within a beat, um, and maybe even within that particular song that can be harsh to the ears, right? And the song is about letting your ego go, right? And so I actually did, I, I, I did that too in the commentary. Like when I was responding back, I was very cordial. I was very, uh, first of all, grateful. I think that's the most important because I remember a time, and I talk about this, that nobody gave a damn about my music and that nobody would even care enough to leave a YouTube comment about my music. So first and foremost, I'm grateful that you even have an opinion about it. So coming from a place of thank you first allows me to preface this next statement or present it in the correct way. The next part of that is I don't give a damn. <laughs> I am not releasing this and sitting back waiting for your opinion. Especially if I don't even know who the hell you are. Especially if I listen to your music and I say we make two different types of music. And although there are some universal references, whether we're talking about the LUFS, the Luffs, as I like to call them, um, and, and where the limitations lie on certain platforms like Spotify and um, Apple Music. At the end of the day, you got to let someone like myself that has been creating for so long that is in a place where it's not touch and go. I'm in a place that's not, oh, I hope they like this. I hope they accept me. I'm not in that headspace at all. I'm in a headspace of I am always, no matter when I get to a place of amazing mixing, whatever that's called, I'll still only be at a checkpoint. And I plan on going until I get to a million beats or a million mixes or a million songs, whatever comes first. This is a journey. This is a marathon. As the late great Nipsey Hussle would say, this is a marathon. And for those that harp on the details of, of these moments that we call songs, these moments that people, I mean, I had, most folks enjoyed it. Most folks understood. It's a vibe. Could there be things that could have been tweaked about it? For sure. But if I would have stuck with those details, I wouldn't have been able to get to another song or another idea. Or I would not have ever released it because I would have forever found more things with it. But you learn. And you try, and I try to get to a place, I'm at a place now where I listen to what someone says and then I run it through my filtration system and I say, my internal filtration system. And I say, first of all, could I, could I see how someone would feel like that? That allows me to empathize with the constructive criticism. Um, I can empathize where someone may hear something and something is harsh to the ears, especially if I didn't intend for it to be. For instance, there was a gentleman that said something about how that song Ego, the snap was a little bit sharp on the ears. And then I listened back. I said, you know what? I can see that. And I told him, I said, hey, man, my bad. I ain't changing this shit, but I'm in my bad. My bad. I can say my bad. And um, he was like, man, you know, it's all good. Maybe it was just my headphones. I don't know. I said, no, nah, it, it, it's 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 probably me. I love loud drums. I love loud drums and I can't do no. OK, I'm done. Um, I do. I love it. I love sounds, percussion sounds that are harsh. I just, I, that's what I'm driven to. I don't know what it is. I love it. Then you got other folks who were like, oh, the, the mix is muddy or this is that. And, and I'm like, I, I get it. I can see how you could feel that way. Someone said it felt rushed. Okay. More than, more than enough folks are saying something that sort of falls in line. And I get it. That's for the producer ears. I get it. In that realm, yes, if I was concerned about making sure this was right for producer ears, I for sure. But all in all, I'm here for the marathon. I'm not here for perfect execution, perfect. I'm not here for perfection. On every single thing that I release, by the time it reaches your ears. It's going through these whatever you want to say this level of ears is at this point after 20 years of doing this, 
it, it's gone through these years and decisions have been made. Hmm. You know what? I like that. I like that. And I like this. Yeah, the vocals could be louder, but I like the way it's sitting within the bass. I love the fact that when I listen to this, it's bass driven first. And they're very, they're not even very, they are conscious decisions that are being made. Now, maybe it doesn't line up with your rules or your ears, and that's fine. Not all music will. And maybe you're coming from a positive place when you are trying to help me. But me releasing music is not an attempt to get help from you. So if you really want to know what I feel about that, I'm aligning with that tweet. I'm with that. I did never, never ask for your constructive criticism. Don't need it to grow. I don't need it to grow. You don't, you don't need it to grow either. You need more at bats. You need more opportunities to fail. You don't need to be so concerned. Do we got to go back to the first episode of this season? You do not need more. You do not need more criticism for you to grow. Not in terms of you musically. Now, from a human standpoint, yes, yes. If you want to build thick skin, which is a very important, a very important asset to have. If you're going to be in an industry where you're going to always be under a microscope as a human being, that is you must have growth. Through the means of having people dislike or give you no's or you must endure the disappointment. You must endure a, a, a level of pain for it to mean something. Right. But that is not a requirement for you to grow musically. What is a requirement for you to grow musically is for you to have more at bats and more opportunities to fail. More opportunities for you to make errors and then learn from them naturally on your own as you're going through the process. And you're hearing the music that you listen to and you're like, I like these songs, but they sound different from what I am making. What is the difference? When you ask those questions, the real growth happens. Not when somebody says, I, I don't like when you did it. That's one person's opinion, which if they're a listener, could be some value to it, obviously. But all in all, you are at where you're at. You are going to become who you are going to become. You are going to output whatever creativity, whatever energy that exists within you. You're going to output that anyways. Whether you decide to go through 78 mixes to perfect it so that it's perfect for the ears that don't necessarily align with yours, doesn't matter. You are who you are and you will be who you will be. So be prepared that no matter how enduring of a process, no matter how long you take, there will be errors. Now, it is our job to make this music first appeasing to our ears. And if we hope to have listeners and hope to have an audience, you know, then then we give the opportunity for it to be the most palatable in the sense of how we make music and the sense of how we enjoy music. It is our job as professionals to alleviate potential issues or things that you did not intend to happen. It's our job to try to alleviate as many of those as we can with our current skill set and our current knowledge of whatever we're doing. But it is not our job to get a constructive criticism and then rush right to alleviating that because that one person doesn't like or this one doesn't matter. What matters is that you brace yourself for the journey that is ahead of you. What matters is that you commit yourself to the journey that's ahead of you. What matters is that you go at your speed and you learn what you need. Go at your speed, learn what you need. So although I, I appreciate those who take the time first and foremost, I genuinely do appreciate you listening. Even if you hate my music, I genuinely appreciate you listening. Because not even on some, some like flex and like, yeah, I get, I get paid for monetization anyway. Not even from that. Like, I genuinely appreciate you taking the time to listen to anything that I do because you didn't have to. And you could you could care less about what I do. Thank you. I appreciate that the, the people that go an extra level and say, hey, 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 yeah, I, I, 
I want to help. I want to help you. But what you must understand is that me releasing music and, and for the most part, most folks, most artists, producers, they're not asking for your help. A lot of folks out here are asking for your help. Talk to them, but don't give it to the people that I didn't ask. For, I didn't ask what you thought of the mix. I put up a song and put the link to it. And if you listen to it and said, oh, that thing there is muddy. I could never listen to this. Perfect. You just made the decision that it's not for you. Skim right over it and go to the next song that's been perfectly mixed in your ears or your liking. I'm, I'm not. I'm just not here. I'm not here for that. I'm here to be an output of energetic and create creative energy. I just want to let it let it all flow out. And as I grow, if you want to, if you want to go on this journey with me, please, by all means, go with me on this journey. If you want to give me feedback, whether it's negative, positive, I don't even care anymore. That's why I thanked anybody who had anything positive or negative to say uh, about it, because it's all feedback at the end of the day. But just understand. From where I'm standing, I could care less. I could really care less. I could care less about the constructive feedback in that sense, helping me musically. I'm looking at that as can I, as a human being grow from this interaction and can I display my growth? That's more important to me than what anybody can say about the music. What's important to me is that I am mature enough to, to look at the positive and say, well, although I may not agree and going through my filtration system of listening to what you just gave me feedback, although I may not agree, I do see the positive in this. And I appreciate you taking the time to be that detailed in your listening. I'll add to that. I don't give a shit. I'm <laughs> I'll add to that, that I would rather you exert that energy towards your own music. Because it's falling upon deaf ears with me because I am literally in this vehicle. Sitting in front of these monitors. And I am learning. Absorbing. Going slow so that I can eventually go fast, but I'm not speeding up for anybody. So if it's too much for your ears, the music I create is too much for your ears. I, I get it. I get it. It's not for everybody. And I don't want to make it for everybody. I get it. Just save your energy. That's all I'm saying. First part of this podcast, I wanted to get that out there because I love that quote. Second part of this, the necessity, music producers, the necessity, you need to start learning how to rap. What? You need to start learning how to rap. And let me make a case for this as if I am a defense attorney. Um, you need to. No, no, actually, I'm the prosecutor. Yeah, I'm the boss. I'm the prosecutor. You the defense. Sit down. Let me get my, my opening statements off. Um. Producers, there are probably many of you out there that have toyed around with the idea of being an artist. There's probably a lot of you out there who actually are artists on the low, are artists for real, for real. You're a producer slash rapper. And for you, I'm not necessarily directing this to. If anything, I want to give you a perspective that I'm sure you probably already came in contact with as you started to sort of produce yourself. But when we think about Three or four or five years ago, if you've been on the channel that long, you know, I made a video that said rappers don't need you producers and producers panties got so twisted. Woo! They got so twisted. They were so bad at me. Oh, they wanted to fight. They wanted to reach their digital arms around my neck through their computers. It was it was it was a it was a very interesting time, to say the least. But the point I was making when folks got out their feelings was that. It's not about rappers not needing you to make the background music. We know the necessity of us as producers. We know we in, we know we important. Don't nobody got to hold our hand and, and, and rub our head and say, baby, it's going to be all right. We don't need to. We know we are our importance. But our necessity that has shifted, that shifted definitely pre pandemic. And it's for sure dramatically shifted post pandemic pre pandemic artists were saying I ain't trying to pay $30 for no beat. I ain't trying to deal with these producers that ain't getting back to me in my emails. I ain't trying to deal with these producers trying to charge me $700 for an exclusive. Hell no, I'm finna go pay $13. They'll go get a splice. 
a Splizice account and I'm finna download some loops. They've already arranged it in the BPM and the, the key. And wait a minute, on top of that, it's royalty free? Say less. Say less. Finna loop me up an album. And then artists did it. Producers getting mad at me like I gave them the idea. No, producers, artists are smarter than that. I'm, I'm an artist as well. I'm an artist slash producer. I know this. They didn't need you. And now they don't need you even more. And that's okay. Because guess what? You don't need artists as well. It's amazing what an artist and a producer can do together. When the synergy is right, when the music is in the right place, when folks are on the on the same wavelength, when the communication is great, when you're throwing ideas out and then the other person has something to contrast it and make it bigger, you collectively as a team, the synergy can create some magic it has over and over and over again with producer and rapper combos. There's no debating that. However, however, you do not need in 2021, and it was like this in 2020, but especially now, post, I actually didn't say post, currently in the pan, pan let's stop saying pandemic before I get flagged, in this panorama, in this parametric equalizer 19, uh, <laughs> uh, in this right now, neither side need each other. You may have preferences, but rappers don't need producers and producers don't need rappers to get off what they're trying to get off. Well, Curtis, who's going to rap on my beats? <laughs> Thank you for asking. You. Why would I want to rap over my beats? I'm not a rapper. That can be debated, but I'm not going to debate that. Let's, let's just go along with that. You're not a rapper. Why would you have a necessity to rap over your beats? First and foremost, let's address myself first. Let me address me. Let me let me give you some perspective. About a year ago and probably the years all leading up to me starting making beats, I had an issue of overproducing beats. A huge issue. I just love instruments. It wasn't an issue to me, but it was an issue to a lot of folks out there. And when I got to a space that said Mm, am I making music decisions by putting all the in instruments in or am I just trying to go for a fuller sound? When I finally got to a place where it was beyond the criticism and I said to myself, I just think that I'm compensating for sounds uh, because I don't know how to properly mix them. Right. In the way that I want them to stand out because I want everything to stand out. When I came to that conclusion, then I said, OK, well, something has to shift because I want to be in a peaceful place with my own music. When I began in these streams, I do a stream, if you, you don't know, called Flocation every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific time on my YouTube channel. When I started doing these live streams and incorporating more of my vocals within these streams and not just making beats, I started to see my approach to how I layered the beats shifted. Because when you're dealing with the vocal that is recorded in mono, and you have all these sounds that are stereo, that are covering all of the, 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 the audio landscape or the, the audio field, you gotta be really careful about how many layers you use, even when properly mixing, because it can become a distraction from the emotion are the message, the main message that you want to give to an audience. Messages like, this is a sad song. And I want you to know how sad it is by my somber voice, by the strings in the background, by this bass line that just feels like it's just a, a warm undercurrent of everything going on, right? These piano keys that start in a very high octave to make it even feel a little bit creepy of how sad it is. You want those elements all to play their role. But it's like, imagine you're in a band and everybody's trying to be as loud as the drummer. I'm pretty sure y'all been in bands where that happened. Everybody's trying to be as loud as the drummer. The, 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 the lead vocalist is yelling, not because it's a style of music, but he's yelling because the drummer's so loud. The guitar player is playing that electric guitar louder than he ever played in his life. Because he's trying to compete with that drummer. Bass player, same thing. 
That would be a hot ass mess. You wouldn't be able to enjoy the music. But when everybody plays their role and knows their pocket, knows their velocity, things go very well. And I think it's the same thing for producers when you start to deal with vocals in terms of sitting within the beats that you're making. A lot of times we're making beats. And I just recently heard somebody say something that I really enjoyed uh, on a beat stars uh, micro content they put up on their, their uh, Instagram. They asked this gentleman, I forget who it was. Please excuse me if I forgot your name uh, that I forgot your name. Uh, he basically said, they asked him a question. How do you know when a beat is done? And he said, when I get to a place where I'm like, damn, it needs one more thing. Typically, I know that the beat is done because the one more thing is the vocal, which in itself is an instrument. I was like, I thought it was pretty brilliant the way that's put. It's simplistic, but it's brilliant also at the same time. So I get that. I, I'm with that. I would even raise the stakes a bit higher and say, artists, go beyond, excuse me, not artists, producers, go beyond just mumbling over your beats because we all as producers to a certain degree do a little and start getting all giggly like I'm not a rapper I'm not a rapper I'm not a rapper I'm not a rapper we all get into that you know what I'm saying everybody has been at that place where they're like I mean I got racks and no I'm not a rapper I'm not not shit y'all y'all shut up y'all shut up I'm not a rapper I'm not a rapper like we've got that I get that I get that raise the stakes even higher maybe you even recorded yourself before and you just hated your voice. You're like, oh, I ain't no rapper, man. I don't even sound like I'm unbelievable. That's not the point. I think that in 2021, with, I don't know how it is in your state, but they're being pretty strict where I'm at in Cali about social distancing and about groups meeting in small spaces. And I myself have been abiding by all of those. Like, I ain't had no guest over here in the stew. Um, all that. You are probably doing most of your sessions by your damn self, with the exception of your family in the background, by yourself. And if you do not have access to artists or you're not working with an artist currently, or maybe you're trying to sell beats and artists have not wrapped over your beats, you're missing valuable time that you can to craft your beats in a way that sits complementary to an artist or at least sits in a sonic space that is so pleasing to the ear that it makes the listener want to do something, want to work out, want to hum harmonize over it, want to put it in the background or it, 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 it drives them. So for those of you that have an issue with overproducing me, starting to incorporate lyrics within my live streams and starting to put these with the beats made me say, no, the word, no, a whole lot more. I started doing what I call addition by subtraction. Taking away sounds so that I get more of the general message and theme and energy that I'm trying to accomplish within this particular beat. So by taking out the unnecessary pad that I layered over the string, because they're both fighting for the same frequency and one's just not necessary. It's just a compensation to make it feel fuller. Taking away certain snare sounds that really weren't doing anything texture wise. They just, I don't know, they just sounded good at one point together and I just kept them for some reason. I don't know. Having kicks, thinking that, oh, I've made this kick more full when it's literally two kicks hitting at the same velocity and you couldn't tell the texture differences because they're literally shaped the same damn way. Are they the same, uh, 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 the same length? Things like that, that it's just, you make these decisions, and I feel that if you get into your rapping bag, you ain't got, I'm not asking you to get out there and be the best rapper, but at least if you start to freestyle over your beats and record them and leave your vocals within it, it will change the way that you approach the way you make music. It is changing the way that I'm approaching making music. I've worked with artists in the past, but at the time, I was nowhere near the producer that I am today. I was nowhere near the mind creatively that I am today. I wasn't ready for it. Now, though, the things that I can do around my vocals, what I'm starting to see is when I incorporate my vocals more within the beat, it's not even a matter of 
I'm not talking about recording over your beats and rapping over them to share them with the soul. You can if you want to. I'm not talking about putting them on straight. I ain't talking about none of that. I'm talking about learning the craft of rapping. Getting used to you rapping with the beats. And I mean genuinely sitting down and writing a 16-bar verse. You getting used to doing this is not only going to shift the amount of instruments that you use, the textures that you use, but it's also going to give you more melodic ideas. As you're messing around with a melodic loop or maybe you got some chords that you put together and you're having trouble figuring out a creative melody. Well, to me, that's where writing a verse will give you a cadence or give you a rhythm or even give you if you do sort of like a sing song type of rapping will give you another pocket for the music to fill in. So even if you have no intentions of ever releasing it, it is something that is like the ultimate cheat code for those of you that want to make fuller productions. For those of you that are worried about, am I adding too many instruments? Do I have enough instruments? See how it sounds around a vocal. And for those of you that are just, you know, the ultimate tight ass, and I never would rap over my beat, use an acapella. But I highly suggest that you get to that space because I feel that even aside from all the musical benefits, I think that it will put you in a place where that when you work with artists or you, if you eventually want to work with artists, you know exactly what needs to happen and exactly what sounds good around that artist. If you're selling beats, can you imagine how you rapping and hearing your raps, even mixing them to a certain degree? One rap, one 16 bar, a hook. Can you imagine how much more complimentary your beats would be to an artist who was looking to buy them from your website? I would imagine if it's already been going for a test drive, you'll start to notice things about your beats that are not so complimentary to artists. For instance, some of you make intros that are really, really hard for a rapper to rap over the first bar when it comes in. So you have this intro that's like all ducked out in space, you use halftime, you put a bunch of reverb on it, and then all out of nowhere, the drums just come in. It's like, and it's like, how you know when the beat come in? He got to be countered in. He got to look at the screen. He or she got to look at the screen and be like, how many, how many, you're not making it as a compliment to the artist. You're not thinking about the artist. You're just thinking about the music. And although that's important initially, if you want to sell beats, if you're trying to provide these, you're going to need to know a little bit about what they like. Well, I think that if you start to see some of the difficulties that you have, imagine that that is going to be compounded by other artists who are all ranges of, of, of experience when they're going into it. Sometimes you rapping to the beat can tell you if a verse is too long or, or the intro or the outro or, or the necessity for another part. Even the transitions be between your verse to the chorus start to shift when you say, huh, do I, do, listening to this music, do I feel like the listener would get an idea that the music is going into a different direction. Right? What I mean specifically, you'll listen to the last eight bars of a, of a, of a beat and there'll be like a string that'll come in or a, 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 a bass line or just some instrument that alludes to, okay, this music is moving and it's starting to build up or it's starting to uh, 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 sort of chill out. Whatever the case that is, you rapping over your beats is going to give you the opportunity to see what works, to see what would make this very complimentary to whoever is choosing to rap or sing over this beat. I highly suggest it. I highly, highly suggest it. I'm having fun with it. I say as I am starting to rap and I say rap because I feel that most producers on my channel are hip hop based producers anyways. But if that means singing, Oh my goodness, Curtis, you asking me to sing. If that means singing, you can carry a little bit of a tune. Well, go to Ontaris and get the rest of that tune. <laughs> if you can carry a little tune, Ontaris uh, Auto Tune, which they have a subscription right now that you can get for 24 bucks a month. No excuse. Take that and start doing that stuff over your own hook. Start taking that and start to harmonize over your hook. Start to sing over them. And 
what you may find is all that harmonizing Maybe not just the vocal. Maybe that's now a synthesizer section. Maybe that's now a string section. Maybe that's now, um, you know, if you rap a certain cadence, ticket the ticket the plants, but the never the dead. I'm gonna seven the member the hammer the never the limit and lane. It sounds a lot like it sounds like hi hats with an open hi hat and a closed hi hat, but. The goal that I have by sharing this with you and that I hope happens for you is that you pull yourself out of a shell. If you're in that, if you're not in that, this doesn't apply to you. Keep going at it. I'm sure that you know the benefits already. But for those of you that are hesitant, you're a little bit nervous. You know what I'm saying? Wait till folks in your house leave if you need to. But you need to get that off. You have to get that off and you need to hear yourself with it. You need to understand what it is that you're artists are going through. You need to understand what your listener is hearing, right? As you start to fill this in, if you cannot find, oh man, I don't know what I should add to this beat. That'll be your opportunity to add something to it. Music producers, thank you so much for listening and watching another episode of the Curtis King podcast. It has been so fire to see this thing pick up momentum and to see so many of you gravitating towards the topics of this podcast. Um, I know that it's a little bit left field sometimes, but I love it. I love it. I love to get these ideas out there instead of just having them ruminate inside of my mind. For those of you that are listening on the major distributors, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you for having me throughout your day and uh, trusting in this podcast to fill up some minutes in your day. I appreciate that genuine. Leave us with a five star rating if you enjoyed it. Share it with somebody. For those of you on YouTube, hit that like button. Subscribe. And once again, you've been listening and or watching another episode of the Curtis King podcast. And this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. I am Curtis King, Curtis King Podcast.com, the Curtis King Podcast.com. Have a good one.